Hello and welcome to my podcast, my second podcast actually, and you are in the back of seat of my car. Um, I know it's a very odd place to have a uh, podcast, but oh well. <laughs> so today we're talking about narratives in history, and um, the stuff that I'm going to be citing is uh, by Alan Munslow. It's historical narratives. So today I'm just going to talk about specifically how narratives necessarily work and how specifically um, something that Alan Munslow definitely talked about in his work, which I found very, very interesting. So I'll just read you the podcast itself and then I'll discuss some pieces of it itself. So it says, hello, welcome back to my second podcast. Today's topics of conversation is going to be centered on historical narratives. Historians, when you get down to it, are storytellers. There's, and humans have always liked a good story. With that in mind, what are the ways in which historians have traditionally conveyed narratives? Academic historians have tradition traditionally told stories through writing. In the current era of the 21st century, historians do not have to be pigeonholed into the same historical method as storytelling through writing. Historians must acknowledge that they need to stay relevant in the 21st century by changing specifically how they talk about narratives or the traditional way you sell narratives to the public itself. That's in general how you stay relevant is you change course and you make it more tantalizing and appealing for people to like what you have to say or to have specifically um, different ways you can communicate. So that would be like through plays or through um, like movies. Those are definitely examples of how historians can use historical narratives but not teach it through writing. So um, the author Alan Munzel points out this very real problem that historians are facing in this digital age. In his work, Historical and Expression, and Munzel points out that history is taught as well as studied through conventional methods of reading and writing, but the shift in digitization of everything, histor in everything in historical texts and manuscripts, historians have to rethink how they convey historical narratives. As M Munzel points out that in his book on chapter four, that history models and expressions can uh, ver vary widely in their assumptions and functions. But because the narratives that they can be spoken or written, a fixed or moving image, or a gesture of myth, a legend, a fable, a tale, a novella, a history, an epic, a mime, a stained glass window, a film, a comic, a postcard, a performance, a street theater, a convention, or a painting. This is, can be found in historical narrative historical expressions on page 64. So this is exactly the point which I wanted to talk about, which was historians have to choose different ways that they want to communicate with the public itself. So this could be through film, it could be even like comics. Um, there's a big comic out which is uh, by historian Trevor Getz, which I'm going to cite. Um, there is even works that not necessarily were written from a historical perspective, like some of the best works are diaries. Um, and for an example, that's like Anne Frank. You are reading a diary of a little teenage girl and you find out like what's happening with her family through the Nazis. And they're, they're talking about her like daily experience in life. That's a tangible aspect of how historians should be teaching history is like a different approach um, than necessarily a textual analysis of what history is. I think that's a fun way to approach history. Um, to circle back to the quote, um, this quote illustrates my point that historians have to tell stories in a different narrative to reach an audience. History doesn't always have to be centered on reading academic sources, rather with the production of history into narratives. Through the new medium like TV channels, like the history program, graphic cartoons like Abina and The Important Men by historian Trevor Getz, but last but not least, historical programs like Netflix, like Downton Abbey. This ways, this way forward is which makes history come alive and irrelevant in the 21st century. But one must always acknowledge that historians must still read and use primary sources in layering their works. Historians can do this through textual technological advances from the 21st century, and which makes historians see how to stay relevant in this modern age. And that is my final podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, for those who have seen it, and you have a wonderful day.